Can everybody in the back hear okay? Yeah. Good. You can't just sort of wave your hand and get. We will get that fixed. I appreciate you all being here tonight. Uh oh. Somebody know how to turn me off and tune back in. Back here. And we have some visitors. It's Alex Crane here on the screen behind us as well, just a minute. Um, Appreciate you being here for um, this internet safety workshop. We have a number of our uh, teaching staff here. We also, I know a number of parents here as well, and uh, we're glad that you are. And we hope that this is sort of a first in a series. Uh, I'd like nothing more than to uh, have you say to us afterward, we'd like to see the next step. We're just going to sort of touch the surface of this tonight, but I think you'll find it very, very interesting. I'm going to introduce uh, the, the group that will be here tonight making the presentation in just a minute, but first let me explain all of what's going on up here behind me. We're also, we all opened this up and we offered the opportunity for any of the other school districts in Genesee County to participate with us. They could have come here if they wanted, or they can go to their own school, their own high school or middle school. <laughs> We're going to run into a little of that as we go. But these folks, these folks are in other school districts. I believe Lakeville is in the upper right. Um, the lower right on our screen is Lake Fenton. Yeah, I'm sorry, Lake Bendel. Uh, Bendel is on the lower left. Hi, Bendel. Can you hear us? Yep. Hello. They're waving. They're all interactive. They're just like they're sitting here with you. They'll be able to ask questions. They'll see the PowerPoint. And if our presenters sort of stay near the podium, they'll actually see them as well. So we welcome Bendel, we, uh, Lake Fenton. Can you, is that Lake Fenton? Hello. Can you wave? Yes, they're there and they're waving. We're happy they're here. Doesn't look like there's anybody at Lakeville right now. Um, and do we have anybody else? GISD uh, is also on one of these sites. So this is the GenNet system that um, some of your kids may have taken classes on. We, for example, offer classes at Davison High School where uh, there will be maybe six Davison students in the audience in the classroom and five Flushing students, uh, Flushing's lab, and six Lakeville students and five Bendel students. And they interact just like they're all in the same room. This has been going on for a number of years. So it's an opportunity for you to see how that works and for other school districts in our county to participate with us. And we're glad that they are with us today. Um, I'm going to step out of the way here real quickly be because I know you're here to hear the experts uh, on internet safety. Let me just introduce uh, real quickly who we have with us. From the Genesee County Prosecuting, Prosecutor's Office, we have two attorneys, Jay Snodgrass, if you'll wave, Jay is over here to my left, and um, George DeMeo. We appreciate you both being here. They're going to talk to you first tonight uh, from their perspective on internet safety. Um, we also have with us tonight from the Genesee County Sheriff's Office, uh, Detective Sergeant Tom Piles, who's in the back of the room, wave Tom. He will talk to you for, from a little bit. Tom is a forensics expert. He's the guy that takes the computer hard drive apart and looks for all the evidence uh, after uh, a crime is suspected. Uh, we also have with us right along the front row here, uh, Chief Bill Brandon from Davison City Police. And uh, we also have with us um, Officer Jimmy Baber from Davidson Township. He's our school resource officer. Uh, we have Lieutenant Tony Craig from Litchfield Township Police and um, Detective Greg Frey from Davidson City. And they're going to talk from a local perspective. The complaints generally come in to them. And they're going to talk to you about what kind of complaints they receive. And finally, we have from the school district's um, perspective, Angela Nelson over here in the blue. Wave, Angela who is our uh, technology supervisor, and she's going to tell you a little bit about uh, how we protect our school district networks um, from uh, the dangers that, that we're going to talk about here tonight. And so with that, my name's Clay Perkins. I'm superintendent of schools. I'm very glad you're here this evening. And I'm going to turn the presentation over to the Genesee County Prosecuting Office, um, Jay Snodgrass and George DeMeo. Thank you, Clay. Uh,
well as uh, just generally beaten by their parents or uh, neglected in some way by their parents. We also do juvenile crimes for delinquents that uh, have been involved in these cases. And one of the things I wanted to start with is to thank Clay and David Tonsley for just sort of letting us do this. Uh, our boss and he, are, I think, are innovative in their thinking about how we should deal with some of these problems. So we, we appreciate Clay and uh, we certainly were, are glad to have him out here to help you with this. Uh, my name is George DeMeo. Uh, they have some microphones near me, but I speak sort of loud, so uh, I don't think there's going to be too much of a problem. I've been in the Genesee County Prosecutor's Office for, it'll be five years in July. Before that, I was a prosecutor in Bronx County, New York, for about five and a half years. Uh, I'm currently assigned to the Circuit Court Division, where we do the trials for uh, the felony matters that don't get resolved prior to trial. Uh, I've been in other parts of the office, too. Uh, someone who commits one of these crimes, which you're going to hear a little bit about, if their case doesn't get worked out, they're ultimately going to come up to one of our courts and uh, be tried. Most of these cases don't end up going to trial. Most of the individuals charged uh, in these types of crimes don't want their dirty laundry, uh, no pun intended, uh, aired out. So generally, they do resolve these cases with some sort of plea. Uh, the laws have had a hard time keeping up recently, but uh, now they're at a point where these individuals are facing uh, significant amounts of time in prison for the acts that they're committing. And uh, we don't get these cases until they come from local law enforcement, whether it be uh, the local division or the sheriff's department. <coughs> they bring it to us, and that starts the whole process going. And ultimately, it may end up in the courtroom. But uh, the presentation we've put together kind of just gives the basics. Uh, one or two case examples we'll give. A lot of our cases are actually still active and ongoing, and so we can't speak about the specifics. But there's some examples that we have up on the screen that I think will give you an idea of what we see, and, and then the uh, officers will give you a better idea of what they see. One thing I wanted to mention, too, is we were both the second. Um, I think we both come from, you know, pompous fathers who wanted to have their names continued. So, but anyway, <laughs> we, didn't, we didn't plan that. But. So we made this little presentation, and we want to start off with the basic like, basics, like George mentioned. By the way, we're not used to necessarily standing right behind a podium, so uh, we're sorry we're, like, shaking around like that. But um, So what is the Internet? Uh, at its base, it's a huge collection of computers around the world. Now, for those of you that might be a little bit more experienced with the internet, uh, we, you know, forgive us please, but we're starting at the bottom, uh, for those of you that don't know what it is. And we've kind of, for those of you that are the techies, we've kind of dumbed things down a little bit, so don't think that we're dumb, we, although, you know, we <laughs> might be, but uh, generally in this, uh, in this area, I don't think we are. But anyway, it's a huge collection of computers around the world. Uh, they're linked together via networks. Networks can be anything as small as a network in your home that links a couple of your own computers or that uh, stitches the whole World Wide Web together. Uh, I think you're going to hear a little bit about the network here in Davison and some of the safeguards they take in order to protect the uh, people that use their network. We're also not used to having two people at a podium. Attorneys <laughs> are pretty much used to just having the audience all to themselves. So this is kind of a new thing for us bouncing back and forth. It's a good thing we're friends. But anyway, uh, so the computers generally on here are linked together via the networks can talk to each other. And I told George that I was going to use the actual air quotes when I say talk. It's not really talking. I mean, in one sense it is. They're communicating with each other. They're not verbally speaking. But I think you get the idea. And at this point, you can access from your home computer, your school computer. More and more, we're going to see, even see the cell phones, uh, the PDAs, the Blackberries. I think the cell phones is the one that uh, everyone should be a little bit more uh, aware of with regards to the kids these days. It's more of a safety issue now that most people have cell phones. There's very few cell phones out there now that can't log on and uh, surf the net or do instant messaging, which we'll get into a little bit. So that's the likely place that during the day uh, your kids might be on. Incidentally, we brought this presentation too in, the, in a paper form, um, and we I don't think brought enough, but we can provide that to you if you want to contact us afterwards. And we give you the phone number here at the end. So, so how is access provided? We, we touched on this a little bit. Um, Internet browsers, uh, I don't know, you know what people know about this, but essentially the browser is a way that gives you access to what's on the World Wide Web, so what's out there on the Internet, and it gives you sort of a medium that you can navigate uh, through, the, through the thing. Um, we can give you a look at a couple of them. You want to do that now, George? Oh, sure.
Sure. Uh, I think most people have used computers, have logged onto one of these web pages, CNN, ESPN. Uh, those are pretty common. Uh, we're actually even allowed to look at the. Well, I don't know if we can use ESPN at work anymore. We can use CNN from the county. Uh, they let they let us stay informed, but I don't think we're allowed to look at sports. Um, eBay, uh, you can use to buy and sell stuff. YouTube uh, is one that we're going to be talking about a little bit. Uh, for those of you that may have heard about it on the news, YouTube is a uh, almost limitless collection of videos. Originally started for ho local homemade videos. You can find pretty much anything you want on it, whether it be an old music video. Uh, I don't think there's any limit to the amount of... Uh, stuff. There's a video uh, right up there about very large hail for someone who's interested in watching three some odd minutes about hail. Have at it. Uh, usually the stuff we're talking about is a little bit more menacing than that. <coughs> you can post to YouTube, so that's something that we talk a little bit about. Uh, people at home, if they have a video camera, they can make a quick video and just send it right to YouTube and, and the world can look at it. Incidentally, there will be some video good uh, politicians and prosecutors and conservatives uh, use local folks as well. We actually think this is a pretty advanced website that we run here. It's uh, got quite a bit of information and we're not going to give everybody that, but we, we like it because it helps us find our gig over there. So. <laughs> Social networking. MySpace can include uh, a picture, any biographical information you want to post, uh, and it can be quite dangerous in the sense that once you log into MySpace and have access to it, if it's a public profile, anyone out there can take a look at whatever you post. One thing I wanted to know too is MySpace is not dumb. Instant messaging is very common now. Uh, AOL Instant Messenger, MSN Messenger, Yahoo Messenger. I think even now um, MySpace has their own messaging system. This is one of the most common ways that uh, individuals talk to each other. All you need is a screen name. It's all free. And uh, you can send real-time messages back and forth. Uh, it's like having a conversation on the computer. This is where a lot of the cases that we ultimately deal with uh, originate, especially insofar as uh, predators. You can enter a chat room and then go individually and start chatting with someone through one of the messaging systems. And that's where we find, especially in the chat rooms, is that a lot of people troll for victims. Uh, they're looking for certain profiles, certain types of kids, and uh, that's where they find them. And uh, instant messengers, you may, you know, your kid could be up till one, two in the morning if they have a computer in their own room messaging back and forth. You can make it silent so you don't hear the little, they used to have a very telltale ding when it came through. And you can also do this on your phone. So there's really uh, almost no limit to how you can keep in contact with someone if you want to. So we wanted to put up some of the uh, vocabulary. And needless to say, uh, we could get very in-depth. Uh, Delma and I were discussing the terms that come out. Uh, and they almost acronyms and things come out daily. So you can be right over your kid's shoulder and not understand what they're typing to someone else that they're chatting with. They use acronyms. It's almost impossible to put up a list because they change every 
day, but I mean, I think most people know what LOL means, laugh out loud, you know, that type of thing is what we talk about. But here's some simple um, uh, things that we wanted you to know definitions of, and it's kind of hard to read probably from the back, but um, again, we have this handout that we can give you if you want, but were there any that you wanted to hit, George, that were important? Uh, well, instant messaging, which is real-time communications over the internet. Uh, I am slang is exactly what Jay was just talking about. It's either a, a word that means a, a much larger sentence or just a couple of words, an acronym that can stand for uh, almost any phrase. And there's quite a few that are specifically designed or were specifically created by kids to warn people when a parent comes into a room or that someone's looking over their shoulder. And that's why I think it, it's important that you have an increased awareness of this. You may only see a couple of letters as you walk by the screen, but it could mean something that might lead you to wonder exactly what's going on. Private messages, George was just speaking about someplace where uh, anyone can go and have a private chat session where, you know, who knows what's being discussed. You could be in a chat room for, you know, the new Transformers movie, and someone who's on that chat room could send a private message to your 12-year-old daughter. And uh, depending on how much information is posted on the computer, they can look at their profile and say, oh, there's a, there's a 12-year-old girl. I'll instant message her privately. No one else in the chat room knows what's going on. She's the only one getting the message, and depending on how she reacts to that message, that could start down a path that uh, is not particularly comfortable for uh, her. So some of the other words, uh, spamming, uh, sending a message to many email addresses of people you, you don't know. This is something that I think most of you might know as uh, uh, sort of an annoying process that uh, large businesses do um, to sort of get their message out. Sometimes porn sites and things like that that you, you'll be getting spam from them and stuff will show up on your computer. Uh, I like to, some people think it just appears there. I like to say that's a bunch of bunk, uh, excuse my language, but uh, you pretty much have to go somewhere first and then you're going to get it. So that's a, maybe a little bit of an indication that someone might have uh, been where they weren't, where they shouldn't have been. But And also too, if you do get an email from some Nigerian or some other foreign country that uh, they have a lot of money and they just need your help in order to get into the country and it's a big payoff, that's pretty much spam. So uh, I'd ignore that. Cyber stalking, something that's a hot topic also, stalking or harassing someone online. This happens, and we'll give you some stats in a minute, but this happens with regularity. So we need you to know that, so you know that uh, there's a pretty good chance that maybe your son or daughter is getting threatened in some way or harassed. And that's almost always a local incident. The cyber stalking isn't really uh, an issue where you meet someone in a chat room. Occasionally they may send nasty messages, but cyber stalking is really designed, uh, the term is designed for local. For you know, kids who know someone or someone in the school or someone's posting something you know, bad about them. So some interesting facts that we found. 50% um, of parents do not or do not know if they have internet monitoring software. I'd be curious how many folks that have computers uh, either do not know or do not have internet monitoring software. You wouldn't mind raising your hands? Okay, not too many. 42% of parents do not review what their kids say in chat rooms. It's, it's pretty much uh, in, uh, extremely important that you're somehow watching uh, what's being said. You don't want to become someone who's sort of hawking your child, but you certainly you know, get them feeling that they're being pressed or under duress in some sense. But there are ways of uh, logging chats and trying to figure out, you know, without them even knowing that you're, that you're what's going on in those chat rooms. And we certainly would suggest that you have some idea of what's going on in the chat room. 95% of parents could not recognize chat room lingo. Those are the acronyms I was talking about a minute ago. We have uh, some examples, I think, on here of a couple. And like I said, a lot of them are designed to be deceptive in the sense that if someone just happens to see them very briefly, they have no idea what's going on. Uh, that's something that's very important. So what are some of the dangers? Uh, you know, we put these up here because they're alarming and, and uh, we got them from a federal uh, government study. Uh, so we think they're relatively accurate. Uh, one in seven youth were exposed to unwanted sexual solicitations and cyber strikes. So I don't know how many people are here, but probably three or four of your kids have been solicited sexually. And one in three youth were exposed to unwanted sexual material. And we talked a little bit more about what that actually means, but that, that could be anything as little as the, the pop-up from the pornography site from a missed link. It could also be, uh, in, and include, I think in this study, uh, unwanted sexual material in that someone you know they're chatting with in a chat room sends them a private <coughs> message and it's got a picture attached to it too. Which can happen. You can send any kind of file back and forth in these private sessions. So 
I mean, this is a staggering figure. You know, I mean, you, this is why we're here today. I mean, one in three have been exposed. This to study was done just very briefly. Uh, the federal government did it about five years ago, and then they just redid it with some expanded questions within the last year. So these statistics are based uh, on both uh, five-year-old data and new data and the changes <coughs> in those data. And obviously, as more people get computers, the numbers seem to be going up. One in 11 youth were exposed to harassment, threatening behavior directed at them. Not, didn't, they didn't observe it happening to someone else. It was directed directly to them. So um, again, it doesn't just have to be sexual in nature, but it can be any kind of harassment or assaulted type thing. So what is victimization? We just wanted to make sure that you understood what some of these definitions were. Sexual solicitations and approaches, request to engage in sexual activities or talk to or give personal sexual information uh, from your child to somebody that they don't know and can't see. Now mind you that some of these solicitations are, are totally unsolicited or un, uncalled for, but there are some studies that show that depending on the type of profile that your son or daughter may set up on MySpace or on one of the other social networking systems, if the pictures are provocative or there's a significant amount of information on them, this is almost guaranteed to be the next step. So that's why we really encourage people to take a hand and keep an eye on what their profiles say. You know, you can have a profile that your friends look at that doesn't have a lot of personal information. Uh, the more they have, the more likely this is gonna happen. And I mean, it can happen without it, but the more you put, the more you're gonna get. Aggressive sexual solicitation. Sexual solicitation involving offline contact with the perpetrator through regular mail, cell phone, or in person. This is sometimes where we get involved, and we've had a couple of these cases uh, where there has been some contact that started online but uh, ended up in some type of meet or visit or personal mail or, you know, and all, by the way, all of this is stuff that's given out with information that your son or daughter has given to the perpetrator. This is where the guy from NBC comes out of the kitchen and, and sees everyone and says, you know, what are you doing here? And he's like, oh, I'm just stopping by. That's exactly what we're talking about. And we have had cases where, uh, I don't think we've had too many, not too many long distance ones. We've had ones out of county where someone in Genesee County uh, engages in a conversation with someone down in Wayne County and goes and picks them up and uh, we've had to deal with those type of situations. But that is the, uh, I can't remember the guy's name from NBC, but that's the predator one. We've got actually one pending case that I can't really talk to you about where it involved, you know, uh, someone trying to get another person to come here, so. More of online victimization, unwanted exposure to sexual material, being exposed to pictures of naked people or people having sex uh, when doing online searches, surfing the web, open email, instant messages. Um, this is the kind of thing that you know, uh, you're, trying to, you're trying to hit on. Right, you can stumble upon it, and we have an example of one or two of those in a minute, but this all goes to the theme of you know, being more aware of what's going on with your children on the computer and talking to them a little bit more about it, and you can try to avoid this. General harassment, obviously we've discussed. That's the new bullying. So here's some examples. We're gonna try to speed it up a little bit because we only have a few minutes, but um, a boy 11 who was playing an online game with a 20 year old man. These are by the <coughs> way examples and quotes that were given by kids in this study. These were actual quotes from people interviewed for this federal study and these are real. He asked me something personal, something about a man's private. So you got a kid in there who's playing some online game even more and more prevalent these days and uh, the guy's playing a game with them, and even in these gaming systems, uh, including uh, the new Xbox and uh, all the other ones, the gamers can instant message or send messages. That's what you could be getting. I don't know what kind of game it was, but it probably wasn't about that. So here's a girl, a 12-year-old, and she said, I went into the chat room and they asked me if I wanted to have cyber sex. I was asking them what kind of music they liked and stuff. So the assumption is that she's on some site talking back and forth with the people on the site but you know, general things that they like, which is a per perfectly innocuous thing to do. But then comes along someone who's a predator. Where do predators hang out? Where young children hang out. So that, this is what happens. A boy 12, this is uh, oh, our particular favorite, yes. so I'll let George take it. Uh, I was going to a site about cereal. It took me to this weird website. I saw people with half sex changes who looked part male and part female and who were naked. I spelled the name of the cereal wrong. This is an actual quote from a 12-year-old boy. Uh, I, we have talked about it in the office. We don't even want to speculate as to what Miss Serial name was led to this, but uh, this is a perfect example, and, and they use real examples specifically for this purpose. 
Uh, and again, this doesn't imply any wrongdoing by the child who's using the computer. This is what can happen. And a filtering system would very likely filter out that website. So some guidelines for, for you folks. Uh, learn all that you can about the internet. I, you know, you don't have to be uh, a geek like myself. Uh, I won't even include George, but you don't have to be a geek. You just have to be interested in it. So learn what you can learn. <coughs> Make surfing the net a family experience. It sounds kind of cheesy, but uh, my mother, who uh, is widowed and lives in Sarasota, calls me and talks to me about what she's been doing on the net. It's, you know, she knows that I'm pretty much going to be safe, but she's interested in it and she enjoys it. So <laughs> this is something that you can do, you know, together. Make it some sort of family experience. Um, ask your children to take you to places that you might be interested in. You know, if they know more than you, that's fine. Let them educate you. And this can give you an idea of how proficient they are in the computer, what they, you know, what your interests are, and uh, it gives you a chance to interact with them on the computer. The more familiar you are with the computer that they're using specifically, the better off you're going to be. Ask them to show you cool sites that they visit often. Um, you know, you don't have to say cool because then you'll, they'll think that you're not cool. But uh, <laughs> whatever the word is today, you know, uh, use that, and then have them show you what 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 they enjoy. So some more ideas. Uh, check out block, uh, blocking, filtering, and ratings applications. I think you're probably going to have a, a little bit of a presentation from the folks here, and they use uh, either a filtering or a blocking uh, system here. And so it's being in use, it's in use right here. So it's not something that's unaccessible or that you need this wealth of knowledge to use. They're generally uh, self-sufficient programs that you can install. We'll we explain them a little bit. We have it at Genesee County as part of the Genesee County network. We're very limited in what we can use. Uh, in fact, for law enforcement, sometimes we have to get specific approval for them to open up a portal uh, to use something because it's blocked by the, the, the uh, software. And generally, at least for the county, the software is more likely to block something than not, and then if you need access to it, then you can ask someone to do that. So clearly blocking software blocks something. I think that's pretty uh, explainable. Filtering software analyzes text on a site for a key term uh, that a user specifies as objectionable and blocks the site or content. I think a lot of libraries and library systems use similar uh, filtering systems. And then there's a rating uh, software similar to TV or movie ratings, you know, the little M or the uh, whatever else they put in the corner. That one's not as reliable because a lot of times it depends on the website participating in it and self-rating. Whereas the other ones, like I said, they're more likely to be more limiting than not, but it's better safe than sorry. Some more guidelines. Be reasonable and set reasonable expectations. Um, you know, try to understand the needs and curiosity of your child. I have my three-year-old, almost four, that already loves the computer, probably because I do, and um, he's already sort of experiencing that, but he has a great curiosity for it. You don't want to stop that, because I think you know technology and tech is, is sort of becoming the way to, to, to more jobs and wealth and that kind of thing. So you don't want to squelch the curiosity, but you just want to be more involved. And then balance the curiosity with the safety and the monitoring. Uh, the more open relationship you have and the more you know about what they're doing on the computer, the, the better you'll, it'll work out for everybody. Uh, George and I talked about the two most important things that we thought, and I think these next two slides are the two most important. Uh, definitely you want to talk to your child and tell them that not everyone they meet is who they say they are. Clearly. I mean, I think all these guys would tell you that. It's <coughs> nine times out of ten, they're not the person that they say they are. In fact, in, in, even if it's in some little way, shape, or form, they're generally not who they say they are. This, I think, is one of the most important ones, and I am well aware that a lot of people don't practice this, but the computer should really be in a central area of the house, a den, a living room, an area where you can see what's going on. The worst place, and again, everyone has to make their own decisions, but really the worst place for a computer, especially for a younger child, is in their own bedroom, uh, where you can't see what's going on. You, again, you want to balance the trust with uh, the monitoring, but there really isn't anything that they shouldn't be able to look at in the den or the living room uh, that they can't look at. So. Um, Generally, I'm trying to think of a study that I've seen that doesn't recommend some version of monitoring, in, in the sense physical monitoring. Where's the computer? Where are you? What are you doing when you're on it? Not two in the morning with the door closed and the kids up all night. Clearly, the closer you are to the computer, the safer your child's going to be. It's a direct correlation. Uh, here's some helpful sites, and I, uh, you know, I'm sure you can't write them down all that fast, but we do have the handout that is out there. Um, you, all you'd have to do really is, is, is uh, you know, use a Google search and type in, you know, safety for kids on the internet and you're going to get 
all of these. I mean, they're really popular. Uh, we have links to them we can show you, but we're, we're running out of space and time here. So uh, we appreciate it. Um, certainly, uh, we appreciate our boss letting us come here. And, and, and again, uh, Clay, we really thank Davidson Schools for letting us do this. And um, it, obviously, I think we're going to have some time for questions uh, later on. And we will. We'll, we'll talk to you both for all of Sure. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Clay. Thank you, Clay, for putting this program on and bringing it not only to the Davison community, but to our friends in Lakeville and Lake Benton and every, everywhere else that care to look at it. I believe it's going to be running on Channel 19 soon, and that's a good thing, too. Locally, uh, we end up, and specifically these gentlemen in the front seats here, when you have a problem with your Internet, these are the people that you are going to talk to, you being the parent, when you have the problem or the school administrator. So it's my job tonight to introduce them. They're gonna tell you what, has, what they've been seeing. I've been in law enforcement 34 years. I'm learning about this stuff all the time. I don't actively work cases anymore, but I'm sending officers to training. Uh, we're, we're learning that tonight, just like you are, these gentlemen put the cases together, present them to the prosecuting attorney and we can persecute those people that need doing that. So I will turn it over to these people. I'll introduce them quickly, and they're each going to give you a synopsis of what they've been seeing and what's been coming out of the Davison area. And I'm sure it's not dissimilar to what's coming out of Lake Fenton, Lakeville, and wherever they're at. Uh, so they are from Richfield Township, Lieutenant Tony Craig, from Davison Township, Officer Jimmy Baber, and my detective that handles all the prosecution, and the detective work for the city of Davison, Detective Greg Craig. Thank you. Hi there. I'm Detective Craig, Davison Police Department. Uh, I've been with them for 18 years, a little over 18 years, and I have seen uh, a lot of different crimes here in the, the area of Davison. One thing uh, that hasn't changed, even with the introduction of, during that period of time, the internet, is the crimes. They've just moved to a new location. Um, and what I'm going to talk about real quick is uh, the information that's shared and found on the computer. We in law enforcement have found that you name the crime, and if we can find a computer anywhere near the suspect's location, the victim's location, uh, or the... Uh, within the home, we're probably going to need that computer because within it is evidence that's, uh, that's needed for uh, proving the crime. Um, examples. Um, recently, uh, I'm working in, in ID theft, and the person was able to obtain some information <coughs> through, we don't even know the method yet, but they ultimately got a loan online. And this person's name, and so now there's this significant loan out there, in another person's name. So <laughs> the computer is going to come in handy. Uh, uh, we do have uh, some leads on that, and, and ultimately we will have a computer that's going to uh, provide us with information that's going to put the person away. Other things is stalking, as the uh, prosecutors have, have spoken. Uh, I found that to be in Davison the big thing. Stalking for us uh, falls under the, the, the children being uh, harassed on, online. Uh, threats, they're going to be beaten up. Uh, it's the same as the old days. It's just now move it to the computer. But the thing is, all this information is safe. And it's important that people understand the, uh, those elements. And I believe that someone tonight's going to tell a little bit about if you find those things, what to do as a parent. If you find that information and proper steps to take before calling the police in regards to helping us save that information. Um, they, t they touched a little bit on child pornography uh, or just period, any level of pornography depending on. But again, child pornography has become uh, a concern here in the Davison area. Um, we get reports of it once or twice a month. Somebody has a concern about something that's been sent to them. And it goes back to uh, many of the things that the prosecutors spoke about. 
a key one that we're finding is runaways. First of all, an increase in runaways and all the reasons that they run away. But then finding out that we go right in the room and we find a computer and we start doing some information check, they've been planning the runaway for a long time. And we usually know where they went to because of the information available in the computer on the Internet. Um, we had a case recently in the Davison area that involved breaking and entering. Not a spree per se, but there was one person doing it. We kept track of him because we knew where he was all the time online. And he, at some point, uh, led, left us some information, gave us some uh, people to contact because he was leaving a trail of the people he was communicating with, and we were able to uh, build a case and, and uh, take care of it that way. Also, uh, again, we use it in our job nowadays, suspect association. It's the same as any, like, again, going back to the old days. When I was, when I was first uh, in law enforcement, we drove around, we found Billy, we figured out who Billy was hanging around with, and we wrote down all the names of his friends, and we kind of knew the circle. It's the same thing. I can go to MySpace, I can go to different locations, and I can find out who's hanging with who. And I'm actually amazed sometimes at who's hanging with who. Um, and that leads me to the second part. In the safety of your own home, your child can be exposed to people who don't have their best interest in mind. Uh, the example that we used when we were kind of planning this, pick any dangerous city or any dangerous location in the Genesee County area, and most of you would not let your child get on a bicycle and ride there and hang out. You would do everything here and, and possible. But at the same time, we're likely to let our children get online and just go riding around, and, and, and if I can use that metaphor, and they end up in those exact same locations, if not worse, internationally. So they're exposed to ideas that um, come back to the community and we see them being acted out. So why does a nice, quiet community that has, you know, some affluence and there's people that have, you know, there's education and stuff. Why are the children acting a particular way? We're finding out it's because the ideas are, they're getting online. And they're coming back here and they're, they're acting them out here in our wonderful community. The violence has increased. Particular children that we would never expect to uh, be a problem, all of a sudden we go, why is there a problem? Is it drugs? Is it this? Um, it's not always drugs. It's not always gambling. Ah, there's another one. Gambling online. Maybe some of you have experienced the, uh, the downsides to being a victim of that. That's a big thing. The poker. We're finding a lot of um, individuals involved in crimes because they don't want mom and dad to find out that they're in debt heavily. So those are items that are happening here in the wonderful uh, da Davison area. And we do have a great community, but it is important that... Uh, that you be aware of all the things that are going on. Any crime that can happen prior to the Internet's uh, introduction into all of our lives is currently happening in Davison, but it's happening at a faster and a more international scale. So it's important to, uh, to, to keep aware of that. Um, Lieutenant Craig's going to stand up here now and uh, cover some things in regards to, um, well, we're calling it the 411 on the chat room. And uh, I'm going to turn it over to uh, Lieutenant uh, Craig. Good evening, I'm Lieutenant Tony Craig with the Richfield Township Police Department. Um, I am the department detective and I do uh, follow up for all cases that come uh, to the township uh, to include internet crimes. Uh, most of the things that we see uh, at Richfield Township involve fraud, identity theft, um, credit card frauds, things of that nature, but we do have complaints um, that involve threats via emails, via uh, instant messaging, and web, web pages, uh, pages like uh, MySpace. Uh, we've also had uh, uh, people creating websites and posting uh, uh, indecent uh, pictures of their spouse. Uh, I had a couple of uh, cases like that. Um, <laughs> the first uh, bulletin that we have up here, uh, you know, kids <coughs> post pictures of themselves online and personal information. Personal information is the gateway to most crime that occurs on the Internet, whether it's the credit card fraud, whether or not it's soliciting your child for uh, uh, sexual activities, whatever that case may be. You need to guard personal information. You wouldn't take an ad out 
in the Flint Journal, which is a, a media that's in this, you know, Genesee County, a small community, uh, you wouldn't put your picture in there and give your address, give, um, you know, your height, your weight, what grade you're, you know, you're, you're in or your child's in, uh, let alone put that on the internet where it's view, viewed by the whole world. Uh, so you need to guard that information. As far as uh, the second bulletin, 40% um, of the people uh, chat with people that they've never met. Well, since you're this big, you've been taught not to talk to strangers, yet they're doing it online. Um, and that leads to, uh, you know, that person that doesn't know you soliciting information, such as your personal uh, information, to do uh, other things. They say the crime rate goes up uh, at Halloween time. People wear masks, anonymity. They don't know who, uh, people don't know who they are. Over the internet, you don't know who people are. Uh, and this uh, boldens people. They do things that they normally wouldn't do uh, when their identity is known. And parents, uh, if you're aware that your child has an ID, you know, AOL, they have a, an email account. Well, they have, you can have an email account with you know, Hotmail, Outlook, uh, you can be a member of MySpace and also have the Zanga, and, and, and there's multiple accounts that they can have that they're sharing this information, this personal information on themselves. So be uh, aware of what they're, uh, what they're posting. And uh, that's all I have, and talk to you later. Virginia Baber, uh, school liaison officer at Davidson uh, Public Schools. So a lot of this stuff I see um, as far as, uh, you want me to attack this? Um, as far as I, I see, I get a lot of complaints, uh, a lot of bullying, um, a lot of people saying mean things, um, posting it on MySpace and things of that nature. Um, it's a big problem for us. I remember uh, we've had fall complaints where people have gotten people's information and ran up thousands, uh, 20, 30, 40,000 um, dollars. Now, you know, like I said, you know, what can parents do here? Um, it's tough being a parent, you know. Um, you monitor your kid's computer use, uh, much like you do for television viewing, riding a car, be their parent, not their friend. I've kind of encountered a lot um, with that as far as parents kind of, you know, trying to draw that line with being a friend and being a parent. Um, you can still be a parent and be their friend um, and pretty much it, it shows that you love them. You know, if you, if you sit back and you, you get the naive notion of this is not gonna happen to me, it's like we see people breaking the cars um, in the township and people say, I've been here for 33 years and I've always locked my door. I never locked my doors in my car. That one time somebody breaks into their car. Um, that, you know, make sure that you uh, um, kind of monitor your, your kids' uh, activities. Um, know who your children's friends are. You know, um, you might run a strict household, but maybe your, your, uh, your uh, child's friends, parents work, you know, second shift. We all work different shifts. We can't always be around. Um, make sure that you know what they're doing because what they can do at your, they can't do at your house. They might run over to, to Billy or Joe's or Sally's house and be able to do that. Um, you might have the, the, doing everything that we're telling you to do here and they go over to their friend's house. They got a new bedroom. They're all the things that we tell you not to do. Um, and what they, what they end up doing is they can get in trouble that way, go down the wrong road, talking to people um, from different areas, not knowing who they really are. You don't know who you're dealing with on the other side of it. Um, and so make sure that you, you, you monitor who your friends are, what they're doing, because you never know what's gonna happen there. Um, yeah, I'll take that from you. All right, harassment. Um, there's cyberbullying, like I said, contact law enforcement agencies. I, I take a lot of that to high school. Um, a lot of that coming to me, I get printouts, people bring printouts, and, and then we do an investigation. We, a lot of the kids know each other. For, uh, fortunately, a lot of the bullying I see are kids in high school. We have 1,500 kids in high school. Um, and there's a lot of people, a lot of them are text messaging, a lot of them are, are on the computer, that's how they, they communicate. Um, and, and sometimes kids can be vicious, you know. Um, they may not be as nice as, as, as we want them to be and, and say some cruel things that hurt somebody's feelings. Um, same thing, if, if someone is posting anything about your child online, especially personal information, you know, contact your service provider because um, they can have the information removed. Nowadays, it, it's, you know, a generation ago, um, I could say that if somebody's diary is put online, everybody would be ready to jump off a cliff, you know, because they don't want that personal information there. Now, uh, people are posting their height, their weight, um, where they live, telephone numbers, um, 
you may be in danger at the same time because if you if they're talking to somebody that uh, is not a nice person and they find out where you live and and you know kind of know what time you go to work because your kids kind of just kind of volunteer that information you come back home and your stuff is gone you know they can come by your house you don't know what they're gonna do you know they can break into your home um, you know they can find out the kind of activities because kids talk and not knowingly they might say some things that this person is a predator that can take into consideration and kind of use that against them. That's, that's very important. Um, you know, at one time, you know, as a young officer, I learned that, you know, I, told, I showed up on a call and I remember it's a car accident and this lady was pregnant and I asked her, you know, uh, I was a rookie guy and I asked her, I said, uh, what's your height, date of birth, name, what's your weight? And she went, and I went, ooh, <laughs> you know, because I'm going to ask the woman to wait. So now they're putting it online like it's nothing wrong with that. So, you know, it's, it's kind of changed a little bit over the years. Um, but um, make sure you're, yeah, make sure they, they keep their pri information private. Just because they put, use names and screen names, they could use, you know, someone that they're really not. Because that way, if somebody's trying to track them down, they really don't know who they are, what their name is, what they look like, um, where their house is, what their activities are. So you want to, you know, they can, there's, there's some people, a lot of people that do that. What they do is they end up using false names or say that, you know, they're somebody that they're not, you know, or, or, or make up a person um, and kind of keep everything revealed. And that's a lot of times what predators do. You know, predators that might have got caught before, they start to use computer, and they're supposed to use, you know, computer equipment. They're going to reinvent themselves so that they can't get caught, so they can continue to do what they do. So you got to watch that. Um, you know, have your kids go to the site, you know, and I know kids – you know, want their privacy and say you're invading my privacy and, you know, they're, they're at that age where they're, they're becoming uh, young adults. Um, but this kind of stuff right here is, is I'd rather have your kid mad at you for a while than, you know, for something else to happen to them. You know, that's important. You got to keep that in mind. You know, parents as well. You know, one thing, you know, the kids get mad at you, you feel bad when you did some things or whatnot to them or anything else. Um, but it's a lot better than an alternative that could be going down the wrong road. And the thing that uh, I do see, too, is like the girl that w went to Iraq. She met the guy online, MySpace, met him. They fell in love. I saw a picture, too. Oh, Lord. Um, and they fly over there. So um, so that's about it. Uh, and she flew over to Iraq, which is not a great place to be right now. Um, and, and don't let your you know children post pictures of themselves on the web. People are posting pictures of them, themselves, um, their family. Um, so you got to look at it like that. Like you got to just watch what you do because um, if somebody puts a picture of yourself on there and it identifies them, even if they can say they're Joe or somebody else, somebody can get a picture of them and see that. So, um, so that was that for me.
these are cases that, that our department has taken uh, and have been involved with at, at our own level, let alone uh, assisted other departments with uh, Indiana Township. We had a murder, it was actually a, a murder for hire case where uh, a female became romantically involved with someone she met online. That person traveled to Indiana Township and murdered her husband. Uh, and then obviously they were, uh, the plot was discovered and it was uh, Several search warrants were executed on America Online and it reviewed, or revealed a, a chat log session where uh, she had been conversing with him and, and plotting this, uh, this whole thing. We've had, uh, as recently, I haven't had one this year yet, but uh, last year we had several CSC cases, which are basically uh, rape cases. We had one in Atlas Township uh, where a young girl uncovered some uh, sexually explicit photographs of young people on her father's computer turned him in and it went into a, a whole big multiple victim uh, investigation and, and that, that guy got 20 or 40 years he's sentenced to right now. We just went through that one last year. Child pornography is rampant on the internet. Uh, it's, it, it's, it's crazy. It comes from everywhere in the world. Uh, a lot of it is from uh, overseas. Online enticement, if, you're, if your people are in chat rooms that are uh, not monitored, it doesn't matter. I, I'm going to show you a little video of that that shows you. It's, cartoon, but it shows you just how, how uh, it's just, it's crazy. Uh, stalking, we have cases, the local guys uh, talk about uh, stalking cases. I got an embezzle, several embezzlement cases right now. One's going to total over a million dollars. It's where they kept records on the computers. Thank you. No problem getting those off. <laughs> uh, it's crazy. That is just the best evidence. You know, they put it on there and, you know, this one even has notes in there how they're going to transfer it between accounts. I love it. Uh, hacking cases, those, those aren't really as as you would think it is, because now the schools in uh, corporate America has, has spent a lot of money on protecting their infrastructure, and uh, we don't really do that many hacking cases, although the, the software and hardware that I have is, is amazing. I, I think it could be into anything, so that's why it's specifically for law enforcement. Um, identity theft is crazy right now, and I just had uh, a lot of it's called phishing, and it's P-H-I-S-H-I-N-G, they call it. And what happens is, I, and I just got one last night from PayPal. It said uh, the, the PayPal computer that you, or the eBay computer that you have ordered uh, has been shipped, and the $682 has been paid to so-and-so. If you disagree with this, click here to file a claim. Well, I haven't been burned before. Don't click on that link, because while, it, while the address says PayPal, it goes to a different IP address, which is an internet provider address. They, all the information that you type on their form, they now have. And within 12 hours, you'll have about $75,000 worth of credit card debt. Getting 24 hours on a check, and it's, it's just amazing. But that's happening overseas. The one that I had was in, uh, in the Bahamas. Uh, forgery and counterfeiting. We just did a case last year. Uh, was, it was handed to us by the Secret Service. It didn't meet their, their threshold. They like to stay at 50000 or above on forgery and counterfeiting. We executed a search warrant on the, on the east side of Flint. They had a pretty high-tech computer system and printer, but they had bought it at Walmart, and they were making uh, nice $20 bills, clean ones. They looked really good. Uh, drug trafficking, our drug team routinely seizes computers when they're doing search warrants. We find it on there. They're emailing back. They're high-tech. They're emailing back and forth, and uh, I just I love it. d and &E cases all the time. Uh, we did a case in Vienna Township where uh, a guy who had just been on parole for about three weeks broke into the pool supply store up there sold these, uh, I've never even seen them, pool cleaning robots. You put it in the bottom of your pool and it cleans the whole bottom and the sides and everything. They're like 800 bucks a piece. He was selling them on eBay for 250. He sold seven or eight of them on there. You know, thank you. Uh, can we get the next one? Crimes where computers are involved, and I'm not going to go through, through and re-talk everything. Anything, any crime has the potential of having a computer involved in it. And what I tell my guys when they're out there, if you're making an arrest in a house for anything, computer there, get the computer, and we'll bring it. It saves us. If they can get it at the time that they're making the arrest with consent, then we don't have to go back with a warrant or anything like that. Um, we've had safe breaking that's involved in computers where they're uh, getting information on downloading it. Uh, the one that was real hot a while ago was the anarchist cookbook where they were getting information on how to make uh, plastic explosives and napalm. It's there. You know, It's a little bit harder to get now, but it's still there. And we've had our department, like I said, I just went through that. Uh, crimes against property was real hot for a while when they were doing uh, malicious 
destruction of properties around Christmas time to go on the MySpace accounts and put, wow, did you see what we did to so and so and their Christmas, you know, they stole this guy's Christmas stuff and dumped it over here. Love it. When we're doing a computer crime uh, case, th these are the, the steps that we go through. We, when I'm doing a computer case, I take the hard drive out and I hook it up to my computer and I make a, what they call a mirror image of it, a forensic image. That way I'm not altering the evidence. And in, in police work, uh, if you're going to test something, if you're going to test some drugs or something like that, you just take a little piece of it. And you, don't tr you try to preserve as much of the original evidence as you can. Well, every time you turn a computer on, it makes a signature to that computer. So we use a series of, of hardware that keeps those writes from going to the, to the hard drive. Whereas if I turn it on, it, it stamps it with a date and time, I make a mirror image of it and I work off of that. That way I protect the original evidence and I keep that in storage. Um, and the tools that we use to do that is a series of uh, hardware write protectors, uh, software. Uh, there are several uh, brand specific pieces that we use and all that stuff is very, very expensive. But uh, once the initial investment is made, they work pretty good with the government on keeping, uh, uh, keeping the renewals affordable. And this is, uh, this is my process of how things work and, and how you initiate a case. The case development, the police report is filed with, it's with the Sheriff's Department. And remember, we work from basically Fenton to Clio and from Davison to Leonard. So you know, we have a large area. We handle the, the, whole, the whole agency or the whole county. We get reviewed or, or uh, cases referred to us by other police agencies uh, who may not have a, a forensic man, and they say, in fact, uh, we just talked tonight about a case that uh, it's an online fraud case. They'll send it to us and say, okay, now find the body of the crime. Find a portion of this. I, I have the fraud over here, but find out who did it, where it's coming from, and if you can, get me enough information to get a search warrant, and we'll go bang the door in. And that's exactly what we do. Our search is either with or without a warrant. If it's with a warrant, then, then we come and bang the door open. If we can get in and just get your computer, then we'll, hey, can we come in and get your computer? And nine out of 10 times, 99% out of 100, most people let us in and take the computer, maybe because they don't think they're gonna find it. Uh, we seize everything that's, and I kind of learned this the hard way, if it's there, I take it, and it really doesn't matter if it's a CD that says, uh, Smashing pumpkins on it. Uh, I, like I say, I got burned. Uh, the guy was making uh, pornographic CDs and labeling them as music CDs. And that's a pretty good idea, but it's not going to happen again. We take it all. It's right there. If there's a webcam, I take the webcam. I take everything. Then I take everything back and analyze it. it and that takes a while. That's not an overnight process. It can be an overnight process in a homicide case. A homicide or a serious uh, criminal sexual conduct, violent assault, we'll work all night on for the most part, if it's a fraud case or an eBay case or uh, a stalking case or something like that, that's, that's usually not time sensitive. Uh, and then I, I file a report back to the initial police department if it's a referral case or if it's my case that, uh, that I've taken, I take it to the prosecutor's office and they decide which direction they're gonna go in. In a computer, if you think you deleted it, it's still there. All a computer does, uh, in the file markers are what it's all about. It's like a library. There's a, a whole shelf of books, and when you go pull the library card to order a book, it tells you where the book is at if you went and looked for it. All when you're deleting something, you're doing the, the data still remains, you're just moving the file marker, deleting that first part of the file. So that works great for, for forensics because I go in there and just recover that portion of the file. A lot of times, uh, uh, child pornographers like to hide put it in areas uh, on the computer that's called slack space, or uh, they, like, they like to play hide and seek. And somebody who's well versed in computers and has spent a lot of time on there know how to hide these, these files. No problem for us, because our software goes right in, it scans a, an 80 gig or 150 gig hard drive in, in a matter of hours. And uh, the unfortunate thing is, is that it, it'll categorize it into certain pictures, but I have to go through and look at each one.
online safety, I'm not going to go through what everybody talked about. They did a great job on everything. Uh, but these, you see it in every presentation. Don't let them keep it in their bedroom unmonitored. The most important thing is to keep it out where you can keep track of it. Uh, don't give out your personal information. There's so many scam websites that are so close to eBay. eBay's a great, great, great deal. Um, but there are so many spaces that just spend nothing but time trying to hack in and get your personal account information. Uh, and the gambling websites, I'm not even going to start talking about them because that, there's no telling where your credit card is going to end up after that. Uh, inappropriate instant messages, leave them off. Uh, don't even respond, don't do nothing, just leave it alone. And no face-to-face -face meetings for your kids. No way. The IP address is the actual physical location where the computer was used. We can recover that. It's, uh, it's retained by the internet service provider for 180 days. We get them all the time with a subpoena and or a search warrant. And once we get the IP address, it's just a matter of getting a search warrant, going to the house, recovering whatever we need to recover. We, we can recover it. Once we're in the house looking for uh, electronic media, you wouldn't believe, you wouldn't believe safes, guns, everything. And if you have a wireless network in your house, if you have a wireless router or anything like that, you set the security on there so that nobody can use it. Because I guarantee you, if somebody wanted to just drive around and check on open open networks in a neighborhood, in a, probably a four or five block radius, you'd find at least 10 open networks that you could log on and download anything you wanted, including child porn. It's there, people are doing it all day long. And it, when I get the search warrant, come back to the IP address that was used on that day and time, it's your IP address. So we got some plans, and we got some things to fix when, when I get there. Right there, that, that says it all right there. You know who you're chatting with. You have any idea? You have no idea. It, it's anonymity on the internet. You don't have any clue uh, who it is other than somebody's uh, putting it on there. If they're putting a picture on there, you don't know for sure who it is. Yahoo, you can start a Yahoo account with zero information, zero, uh, zero exact information. Websites that I like. Uh, it's the Public Sex Offender Registry and the Offender Tracking Information uh, Registry. It lets you check for uh, sex offenders in your neighborhood.
soon as he signed on, uh, the seeking young boy seeking older friend, he was inundated with instant messages. And that's the way it really is. I went to uh, some training out in Philadelphia a couple months ago. We made up on Yahoo. Uh, everybody in the class had a computer. There's about 30 people. Made up a localized profile. And the, the purpose of the class for making a localized, my, my name, I tried to make it Flint, was that it should you spur some interest that you can carry the case back to your home jurisdiction and prosecute it there. So I made this uh, uh, profile that I was 12 years old and that I was a female from Flint. And within 30 to 40 minutes, I had three, maybe four guys that were interested in, in meeting and taking me out to a movie. One guy sent, uh, it was a video clip of him business, and uh, it ended up being that this person was not in a jurisdiction that we were able to prosecute from. It was, uh, I can't remember where it came from at this time, but if you're not monitoring what your kids are doing, and you're not monitoring the type of services they're using, you don't know what's going on, these people are out there, and we're waiting to take advantage of, and waiting to exploit your kids and the people that you care about. These, these are both on the state police website. Uh, they're really cool. You can check uh, convicted sex offender. You can have convicted sex offender information should they come to your neighborhood. Emailed to you. It has an alert on it. Or you can check convicted felons if uh, they're in an the area. That's all I have. Yes, it's been a busy night here. Um, I wanted to point out that the prosecutors talked about the internet lingo that's being used. I think all of us touched on it a little bit, the acronyms that are being used. And we put together, and it's a very, very brief summary of all the acronyms. We put together a little cheat sheet for you. As parents and as educators, those are the ones that I thought might be interesting to you. The parent over the shoulder, the parent in room, those types of acronyms that you can uh, kind of know what's going on. They do change every day. Um, anything, I mean, kids have their own language anymore, but um, you can go online to one of the websites that I'm gonna show you here or uh, give you a link to, and there's actually 35 pages of known acronyms right now. So I wasn't gonna publish that whole thing for you, make you take it home and study it. <laughs> we wanted to give you a summary. And my handouts, I have handouts for you too, but they were a little late. So if you didn't get one from the schools, please feel free to take one of those before you go home too. There's some links that you might find some useful um, sites and, and tools there. Um, again, I'm the technology supervisor here at Davison Community Schools. Your kids keep us hopping with internet. And we talked a lot today about all the bad stuff internet does, but there's so much good stuff too. I don't want you to leave here today and think, I never want my kid to ever get on a computer ever again, okay? 99% uh, of everything we do day in, day out here at the schools is used for positive benefits to the child. There's lots of cool sites, wealth of information. Um, so don't let that hinder you. It's just like the real world, however. We, we need to know how to protect our kids. There's lots of good in the real world, lots of bad in the real world, and we just need to protect our children from both of those um, from the bad in both sides. There we go. Just so you know a little bit of what we do here at the school, Congress passed the Child Internet Protection Act in the year 2000. So we are bound by that here in the schools. We do have to do some filtering. We have to protect your children while they're here. Um, we have to use filtering. We must have an internet acceptable use policy. And I think we have those here for you too. If you're interested in our acceptable use policy, which is long from all the rules, but we cover all of the rules. And that's also available on our website too. So if you get home and you want to find out what our rules are, they're available on our website. 
Um, students at our school also have to sign an acknowledgement that they've received the acceptable use policy so they can never say, hey, we didn't know that was a rule. It's part of the handbook. It's part of the parent handbook. You really should have a copy. If you've not seen one, I do advise you to go to our website if, you, if we don't have them here, if we don't have copies here, um, to, to pull up our rules because you might make some rules based off of our rules for your household um, that are very similar. And in some buildings, here in this building, I know they can't even get their library card until they, they sign that they, they know what the rules are for the computer and internet use and they're going to abide by them. Then we'll issue them a library card. A uh, couple policies that we have here at the school just to make sure we have safe surfing, safe students while they're here on computers. We don't let any students have email accounts. There's very, very few that we let have email accounts. Online classes at our high school particularly, that's about it. Other than that, here at Davison, we don't issue email accounts. Um, one of the things we want to do to protect them. Um, we have individual student network accounts here at the school that protects them a little bit more. Um, so if you have Windows XP at home, if you have an individual, you can have them log on as them. It gives them a little more privacy, but then again, we can also see what they're doing because they have, when they log on to a computer here at the school, everything's tied to their username. Like somebody mentioned, it's tied to the IP number. So if there's something going on, we'll see it. And then we also teach them, because they have network accounts, we educate them on the importance of keeping their password private, not sharing their password, so they're getting that type of, of basic instruction on password protection and education from using those network accounts. And we start that in the fifth grade, so at Han. We talked a little bit about filtering software for your computers. Here at the school, we have filtering software. It's actually um, monitored by the GISD and affects all the schools in the county. Um, all the schools, we don't have any direct lines, internet that anybody can get around to filter all of those computers. Every computer hooked up to our network here at the school goes through that internet filter. And it's pretty strict. Um, we sometimes have to call and reversibly get things unblocked because it's being too strict. And I actually prefer that. I think it's better that it's more strict and we'll um, tweak it down a little bit. The filter that we have in place is currently blocking free email accounts, so students that go out and get Yahoo or Hotmail accounts that you don't have to pay for, and you can, um, particularly with those accounts, you can say that my name is John Doe, and they'll issue you an email account. Um, so they're anonymous, and those sites, checking those types of emails, those are blocked here at the school through that filter. Um, personal email accounts are also blocked, so even if you have AOL at home, you're paying for it, there's some kind of tracing because you've got a credit number somewhere a tie to that account. We still don't allow it to happen here at school. Kids, staff members, nobody can check their personal email from school. Um, that eliminates some of the uh, communications that sometimes go on that we can't specifically monitor. MySpace, YouTube, some of these social networking sites, those are all blocked by the filter as well. Chat rooms, instant messaging. too far. Okay, other things we do to monitor and track student internet use here at the school is of course student and or teacher and staff supervision. Um, we use some monitoring software here at the schools too. We talked a little bit about that and with this software we can actually just remote right into a computer um, from administration over here at the middle school to see what the kids are doing on the computer and watch them in real time. Um, and we also audit their files, we audit their histories. And I'm not going to get into great detail on how you could do that at home, but you can. We'll come to that in just a minute. What can we do at home? We talked about filtering software. This is um, filtering software is going to let your internet go to only sites that you have pre-approved. Um, there's many on the market. In fact, if you anybody knows Google, a top of popular search engine, if you just type internet filtering software in your Google search, you're going to come up with tons and tons of people that are trying to sell you a product. Um, monitoring software, that's different than filtering software. Filtering software is going to limit the websites that you get to or filter out those bad sites. The monitoring software, sometimes it's incorrectly called spyware. Not to be confused with the stuff you pick up from the internet that downloads on its, your computer that you have to have McAfee for. 
What you actually want is a software that's logging internet sites on your computer. It's logging keystrokes made on your computer. And it's not a bad idea to get familiar with these types of software programs to make sure that your children haven't put one of these types of programs on the computer to monitor you. <laughs> Seen it happen, okay? So familiar yourself, familiarize yourself with this, wa this monitoring software. Um, one thing also is to keep track of what they're downloading. You might want to watch if there's any new files that show up on your computer. And I hope to someday have a class where we can sit in the lab and I can show you how to look for this kind of stuff. So I'm kind of taking the approach that you know a little bit about computers right now. What else can you do at home? You routinely check the computer activity, the internet history. That's one thing we do a lot here. We look at the internet history. We look at bookmarks. We look at favorites in Internet Explorer to see what's been marked there that kids want easy access back to. If they're inappropriate, get rid of them. Um, look for gaps in the history files. If anything's been deleted from your child, um, you might be able to tell because, gee, there's activity up until November 1st and then there's nothing until today. I know I've been on the internet in the last couple months. What happened to all that information? It could have been deleted. dance up here with this thing. Michelle, can you hit my enter, please? Okay, what can parents do at home? One of the first things to do is to post internet rules by the computer. And if you didn't see, we put some mouse pads back there to give you a start. And in the mouse pad, there are some basic internet rules based on the age of your children. And we thought, how convenient. It's going to be right there by your computer if it's in a mouse pad. So that's a good starting point. And feel free to revise this. In fact, we got it from the NetSmarts website, which I'll share with you in a minute some more. Um, but feel free to start with this and take one of those mouse pads home and post the rules by your computer. Another good thing is to establish time limits. If your kid's on the internet for six hours a day, there might be a problem. So you want to establish a time limit. Uh, maybe swap TV time for computer time. Uh, we talked about keeping the computer in a public room, a more high-traveled room. And one thing I'd love to tell parents is get informed about computers. Get informed about the Internet. I know a lot of parents sometimes are scared of the Internet, scared of computers. Take a class here and there. We have DCER offer computer classes all the time. If you're one of those people that doesn't feel comfortable, you need to start getting comfortable. So start taking some classes, picking things up. We talked about having your kids show you some cool sites to go to. Learn what you can. That kind of worked, I don't know. Um, what else can you do at home? Ensure that the internet screen names are non-descriptive. We talked about that. Um, using internet or child-friendly search sites. We use Yahooligans and Ask, Ask Jeeves a lot here in the schools. Um, and I, I see some media center people there very familiar with our child uh, friendly internet search engines. Um, and again, let your kids show you what, what to do online. Let them show you what the cool sites are, what the favorite sites are. And we talked about not letting your kids post photographs, but as parents, I see it all the time. We love to put our pictures up on these public sites and show off our kids to our families. Bad idea. Public sites. They're seeing your kids on those public sites and you're saying here's my daughter Emily that you might not have Emily's last name but your last name's on there and people are putting two and two together so be careful when you're posting pictures as well as you, of, of your family uh, stick to private sites email those things and some internet service providers have some photo tools you can use to send photos back and forth another thing to be careful uh, we talked about some of these other things names and email <laughs> Never allowing a face-to-face -face meeting unless you're there. It's a public place. And I would also recommend talking to your children about not responding to emails, what exactly personal information is. Not just name, address, phone number, but don't put your parents' names on there because I have seen where somebody can dig up somebody within 10 minutes because they have listed their name as the child with mom's name and last name, and then we put the child's name with the mom's name and done a search and came up with the phone number and the listing and the address 
And then we've got a map, and now we know where Emily lives because Emily put her mom's name on the website too. So teach them not only not to post information, what type of information is that that you shouldn't put up there? And know who your kids are exchanging email with. Some people even get their child's email password and actually go in and monitor their children's email to see what's been coming in and out. <laughs> and I check their sent, too. I check their sent mail, too. I want to see what they're sending. I want to see what they're getting back. Now, they could go in and delete those emails before I went in there. Quick. Quick as a carrot. Um, consider asking your child where they go online. Uh, here's some of the passwords. Ask them. Ask them to see their profile on MySpace. Ask them to see what they're putting up on Facebook. If they don't show you, then you have a reason to suspect something's going on. Um, sometimes, depending on your age, you might just want to, you know, a middle school kid, ask, ask them, I want to see the site before you post it up and approve it. Um, smaller children, create the profiles with them. And this is a good one. I do this all the time on myself. I use Google and search for myself. I use Google and I search for my kids. And I do variations. My name's Angela Nelson, so I search for Angela Nelson. I search for Nelson Angela. I search for Angela J. Nelson. I search for Nelson J. Angela. Haven't seen anything bad yet, in case anybody wants to know. <laughs> but, but that way you can tell if somebody's posting something else on another website you never even thought of, because people can own their own websites and um, post things we talked about this. People online may not be who you think they are. Don't believe everything you read. These are other things we need to talk to our kids about. Make sure that they know anything that's too good to be true mm, probably is. This is a good little tip for parents here. Credit card stuff. Whenever you're giving out credit card information or personal information, usually when you go to a website, yeah, you put in www, everybody knows that, right? www. Before that www, there's http colon backslash backslash. You don't have to type that, but it's always there. Anything that you're putting in personal information on should have that S. That means it's a secure site, the transmission is secure, and you don't have to worry about somebody stealing your information. If they're going to be any orders online, play some rules. And here's another good little tip. Monitor your credit cards. Some sites use credit cards to verify the age of the person that's signing up for an account. We assume if you're a child, you don't have a credit card. So what do they do? They get a hold of yours and put in your information, and now they've got an account to the site, but you're getting charged for it. So watch your credit card bills for anything placed online or any wacky charges you don't know where they came from that somebody might have used your credit card to get an account. Okay, we talked about filtering software. This is probably something all of you want to know, which is why instead of writing all these down, I would advise you to pick up some handouts on your way out. These are just some examples of some filtering software you can buy at your local computer store to put on your computer. They're becoming very user friendly. You maintain the password, nobody else can get into it. And here is some software that's used for monitoring. Um, I know for sure that this one right here actually records the keystrokes made on the keyboard. Every keystroke made on the keyboard will then be sent in an email to your email account. So that's um, some good sample software and there's tons out there. A couple things to talk about. I'm running out of time. Um, just wanted to show you um, some warnings. If your child's spending a lot of time online, you might want to be concerned. Um, if you're getting phone calls from people you don't know to your child, or if your child is making phone calls, especially long distance, you might have something to be worried about. If your child's receiving gifts in the mail from people you don't know, and this is what we get all the time at school, right here, this one. I'll tell you, this, they're going to do this to you. You walk in the room and boom, all of a sudden the computer's off. Oh yeah, that's what they do. And then they get a little tricky, they'll close the window. Oh yeah, that's when you say, oh, what are you doing? Okay? And if you know your child's using an account that belongs to somebody else, start asking some questions. If any of these things happen, what do I do? We're gonna call these guys, because they know exactly what to do. Michigan State Police, 
And there's some other, oops, let's go back one. Maybe. Um, I'm gonna keep going, but it is on my handouts out there. There's the number to the Michigan State Police, the Michigan Exploited Children Hotline, some other numbers on there. So if any of these things happen to you and you do need to make some contact and get some help, that's where you can go. One thing I want you to know is that smart kids, I say smart kids, not necessarily smart kids. There are sometimes ways to get around filtering technology. Nothing replaces being a parent, being a teacher, supervising our kids. How do they find out how to get around this filtering software? Anybody? On the internet, you're absolutely right. Absolutely right. Um, so when you are looking for software, if you're interested in filtering software, one thing you might want to check out is what is their reputation as far as kids getting around the software, breaking their code, uh, breaking the passwords, whatever it takes. Because some of them, the one we use here at the school offers a challenge to our students and says, if you can break our software, we'll buy you a pizza party. So they challenge the kids to break the software and it hasn't been done yet. Um, so that's one thing to be aware of as you're shopping. Also, smart kids know how to delete some internet history files. That's why I said watch for those gaps in those history files. If you're in November and see November to, to January, there's nothing. They might have deleted some of those. Um, here are some of those links I wanted to let you know. Again, I have handouts back there so you don't have to write them all down. And you know what? These are the same ones every one of us has recommended you visit today. These same websites. These are good parent safe, school safe. Uh, this NetSmarts actually is the one that has all of the 35 pages of internet lingo. It's actually got online classes for parents to take to become more educated. So these are some really good sites. If you're scared of the internet, it's a great place to start because it'll walk you through all this stuff and you'll be getting some experience yourself too while with the internet while you're surfing to protect your children. All right, that's it for me.